In this video, we're going to take a look at some secret mechanics in Battlefield 4. These are facts that you might not know about, and hopefully some of you will get some use out of them next time you play. I reckon quite a few of these tricks are unknown by most players, although there will be a few of you that do know pretty much everything about Battlefield 4 at this point. That being said, maybe you get an edge over the next opponent you face. Who knows, maybe DICE will keep a few of these in Battlefield 2042. Examples of each trick will be given in the background with the help of my friend Andy. His channel is linked below in the description. Holding spacebar and S when you hit the ground from a last second parachute will help you survive. The easiest way to do this when you jump off a building or when you're spawning in from a beacon, press S and hold it all the way down to the ground and then hit spacebar and hold it right as you're about to hit. The spacebar will deploy the parachute, so obviously you can't have auto parachute. You have to make sure that's disabled. And as you can see from an example here from Andy, he basically hits the floor and survives. Really, really useful, saves you a bunch of time, and you'll die less doing this. Here's a cool one for you. It's known as the Ride of the Valkyries Easter Egg. When you're playing Operation Outbreak, if you're on the US side, take the helicopter with two or more people, fly to the back of the map, basically above the spawn, just into the dead zone, and then as you fly back across the map, the music will trigger and you'll almost be in Apocalypse Now. For bonus points, pick up the M60 for some explosive damage. You don't actually need to take it though. Check out this clip from inside the helicopter. You on the right or the left? Right. Right. Oh my god, look at the hill, look at the hill. Oh, I'm getting kills. <laughs> oh no, the heli. We're down, no. we're going down. You can use a bipod on the back of a quad bike or snowmobile. Really interesting this, you don't actually place the bipod, but you do gain the bipod accuracy. Look how much of a laser this thing is on the back of the quad bike and then off it it has the normal recoil. Super useful, something that I'm definitely gonna try and utilize in future games. A few locker tricks for you here. You can access the tower on C with a sneaky little move, as you see here. You go up to this emplacement weapon, boom, click on the 50 cal and you're into the tower to get that nice little flank. You can also use this little trick to get on top of a ledge around the edge of sea. I do not recommend doing this. I've never done it in a public match. It's not something I recommend. Apparently you can get banned by fair fight and it's not somewhere I think DICE want you to go, although they have put this little climbing, jumping puzzle to let you get there. Not too sure on this one. I'd not do it. I do see people up there occasionally. It's not exactly a great position, easily grenaded out of or shot out of, not somewhere I'd go. In addition to this, you can do a medkit jump, a little Mario jump. This isn't exclusive to Locker, you can do it on any map. Very cool if you want to get a nice trick move on an enemy player. I don't think you can get anywhere sneaky with this anymore. You used to actually be able to jump to all sorts of places with it, but not anymore. It seems like it's been nerfed a little bit. And finally, something that you see people using on Locker all the time, but again, not exclusive to Locker, is this weird slither. Again, it's one of Battlefield 4's many glitches. You've heard of the Zuzu, the Vuzu, all of these weird things where you can glitch out your character hitbox and teleport around the place. I hope it doesn't return in Battlefield 2042, but you can see why people enjoy it because it's another thing to learn which can give you an advantage, a skill ceiling if you like, although in this case it's more of a glitch that people know about and other people don't more than actually learning it. The Slither, as it's known, is something very interesting. Essentially what you do is you run up to something that you'd usually be able to vault over, you switch weapons, and then you jump, let go of all the keys on the keyboard, move your mouse slightly away from the object you are vaulting, and you slide along, and look how far you can go. The enemy though, as you see here, I'm looking at Andy, will see this. Some tanks can actually push other vehicles up in the air. The US tank beats the Russian tank every single time. The Abrams will flip the T-90 up into the air. If you've got no ammo, it's a really great last ditch attempt. And also something that I use in close quarters all the time, just to 
sometimes get a free tank as the other person bails out. You quite often roadkill them and then you can take the tank for free. Did you know that if you're in a helicopter, it often takes quite a long time to take off. Next time you're in one, just get in, press, take off, whatever it is, W that most people use on PC. And look, it takes forever to get up into the air. If you jump in, however, and seat switch up into the passenger seat and back into the pilot seat, you'll take off instantly. This is something you can really utilize on those helipads where you need to get away quickly before enemies see you. A word of warning though, if you do this in the base, there is that small window where you're not in the pilot seat where somebody else could spawn in it and take that helicopter away from you. When you spawn in a vehicle, mainly a vehicle that has a magazine or a cartridge like the LAV, the Zunis or the 30 mils on the helicopter, whatever it is like that, make sure you shoot one round. That will then, as you can see in the background, start the reload so you're going to get a whole nother magazine for free. Perhaps the most powerful option on tanks is thermal camo. It doesn't tell you in the description of thermal camo what it actually does. As you can see as we go through some examples in the background, first of all, it makes your tank invisible to thermal. Not completely invisible, but very difficult to spot through thermal scopes. Sure, you can see it, but look now, as the tank just kicks up some dirt from the ground, it basically becomes invisible. Secondly, it reduces your spot time to only four seconds. As you can see in the background, you're unspotted after four seconds. Usually it's 12, so that's a huge advantage. And I'm not going to include it here because we didn't do this, but it increases the amount of time it takes to lock you as well. Just another little advantage. If you're in a tank and you obviously get the advantage of having the thermal camo, as I pointed out, you get the thermal sights so you can see most things in black and white. It's quite difficult as an infantry player on the enemy team to stop that tank being so effective. The one thing though that people fail to use are flares. Take them as a medic, a support player, whatever it is, you can just take flares and throw them in the places where you plan to cap a flag or whatever it is you're doing. It completely blinds the hell out of a tank. If you're playing Graveyard Shift, the night map, Throwing flares won't just ruin the day of tank drivers. Everybody uses the flare sight on that map, so everyone won't be able to see a pretty strong counter. When locking a vehicle from a scout heli or stealth jet, you can fire one lock, disengage that lock by aiming away from the target, and then fire another. Both will then hit at once, as you see in the background. The reason for doing this? Well, the target will probably pop their countermeasures as the first lock comes in, that missile will then go into the distance and come back and hit them after their APS or whatever it is they're using has finished. Really sneaky. I see a lot of scout pilots doing it. Definitely something that will gain you an advantage. A simple one here, but something that many people don't understand. If you place a spawn beacon under some sort of cover, you will spawn on this exact location. If you spawn it out in the open, on most maps, as far as I'm aware, you will parachute in, allowing you to get on top of most buildings and structures, things that you want to get on top of. Just place that beacon outside. Now here's one that I doubt many people know about at all. The tank actually has three speeds. It has normal speed, boost speed, and crawl speed. You activate the crawl mode with the prone key. I have it set to left control. Many people have it set to different bindings. So just make sure you know what that is. The crawl mode allows you to pass over enemy mines and slams without triggering them. Super useful, as you see in the background, in certain situations where you might need to do it because you've seen it really late. There's a mine right next to you. You think it's going to explode. Hit the crawl key and you are protected. Another interesting point, though, is you don't crush teammates in hardcore mode if you're using crawl speed. Are you sick of using APS in a vehicle, a tank or an LAV, whatever it is? Well, don't worry. You can instead use smokescreen. Smokescreen is something that many people used all the time in Battlefield 3, but not so much in BF4. I suggest using it because whilst it isn't the magic button that APS can be, it does provide you with a pretty cool countermeasure in certain situations. Take a look at this. The main thing that smoke will do is prevent you from taking a critical hit. Everything that hits you will do about 21 damage and you won't get disabled. Here we have my friend Andy in the tank, shoots me in the back without smoke screen. Look at the damage. I'm disabled. It would be a little bit tricky even with APS to get out of this situation. With smoke screen, however, you can hit it, boom, he only does 21 damage. Also, 
it recharges very, very quickly, so you can spam it a lot. If you click on a vehicle in the spawn screen, then press escape, you'll be able to see the vehicle wherever it is on the battlefield. Super useful if you're waiting for that vehicle and you want to know if it's destroyed or still out on the battlefield, you can click escape and see if the tank is still driving around or whatever vehicle it is, or if there's just a wreckage there, you know it's destroyed and it will spawn soon. A quick one, many people still don't know this, in Conquest a ticket is removed when you spawn, not when you die. If you're at the end of a game and it's super close, it doesn't matter if you die right at the end, just don't spawn back in to save that ticket. Did you know that you exit a vehicle in the same way that you are looking? This is super important if you are a gunner of a tank or an LAV and you want to get out on the safe side of the tank, so let's say you're taking fire on the right side, and that's where the enemy fire is coming from. You can point to the left, hop out, and there you go. You'll be on the left side, which is the safe side. It works for helicopters as well. When you free look to the side, that is the side you will jump out of. A lot of people wonder why my friend Marius, when he's flying, or myself when I'm flying on rare occasion, why we jump in and out of the helicopter and why I jump in and out of vehicles a lot of the time. The reason for this is because it unspots you. Plain and simple, super powerful, being spotted is one of the most difficult things to counter in Battlefield 4. And a simple way to counter it in this case is to jump in and out. A weird one next, but something that definitely works. If you're about to have an accident in an air vehicle, bailing out just before you hit the floor usually means the vehicle survives. You can get away with some pretty crazy accidents this way. If you stay in the heli though, you would explode. So that's all I've got for you today with this list. Quite a few little tips and tricks for Battlefield 4 that you might be able to use. Maybe there's one or two things in there you didn't know about already. For some people, I imagine you didn't know about any of those things. And in that case, welcome to the world of Battlefield 4, where there is so much stuff to learn. I'm even learning new things every single day when I play. Little glitches, tips and tricks, routes on the map that I didn't know about, ways to get into certain positions or angles to hold where I can throw a grenade or put a claim or whatever it is, there's always something new to learn in Battlefield 4. Feel free to leave your tips and tricks in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.